Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and sentient robots. My name is Nick, and this broadcast is brought to you in glorious Golden Vision. Today, it's not actually Let's Chat Games, it's Let's Chat Movies. We're going to fix that right now. The show will be starting in about three minutes. See you there. Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Chat Movies. We'll be getting started in about a minute and 30 seconds. Make yourselves comfortable, make yourselves at home, and we'll be chatting with you very shortly. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and sentient robots. Good to see you over there. Better call me. Good to see you, Jake Lionheart. We got uh, quite a few viewers over there on the Twitch chat. I want to say hello to all of you. And uh, why don't we get this show on the friggin' road, shall we? That's what I want to do, personally. I, I, like, I like getting shows on roads. I kind of specialize in that type of thing. I, I suppose you could say that the YouTube community has... Uh, has come to know me as the guy that gets the shows on the roads, but uh, let's let's see what we can do with it. <laughs> Greetings, gentlemen. Hello, Hello sir. Hi. You are Hello. live on Twitch and YouTube. Whoa. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Not prepared. Got to put the pants on. Hold on. <laughs> I will be in the corner and I'll be jacking up. 
<laughs> Owen in the corner jacket it, ladies and gentlemen. Get Owen. Hello, everyone. Hashtag Actually, get Owen. <laughs> get Owen. <laughs> I should probably get the, start the recording. Uh, I'm just going to give like another minute or two for people to start showing up. We see you over there. Chat Mo, welcome back. Good to see you, man. Welcome to Mo's. Flaming Mo's. <laughs> Gotta go to Mo's. Gotta go to Mo's, yeah. I remember that shit. <laughs> it's an important part of my youth, personally. I don't know about you, gentlemen. Anyway, all right, let's get this show started, shall we? I'm going to start the recording in five, four, three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and sentient robots. My name is Nick, and this broadcast is brought to you in glorious Golden Vision. Today on Let's Chat Movies, on this day, August 24th, 2015, we are joined by the one, the only contributor for the weekly poll, as well as many, many other things. You can find him on Owen Likes Comics. Owen Farrington, how you doing, bud? Well, when it comes crashing down and it hurts inside, you've got to be a man. You don't have to hide. <laughs> when you hurt my friends, then you hurt my pride. And I've got to be a man. I can't let this slide. How are you all doing, guys? Wonderful, especially now that, that you've uh, treated us to that. We're also joined by the one and the only Eric Baron Von Comics. How the hell are you, man? How you doing? I'm hardy for hardy. I can't be any better. <laughs> you know what's interesting is that not only are we talking a little bit about Tom Hardy today, but we're also talking about Terminator Genesis, a film that you walked out of, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have the proper authority to talk about this show. Um, so Let's Chat Movies is the show where we talk about approximately six different topics regarding films, films that are coming out, films that have come out already that we're really interested in and we think that you should know about. We're also introducing a new segment called Rumor Mill in which we'll be talking about, well, rumors in the, in the film industry. First topic of the day, Empire Magazine's October issue is filled with all kinds of amazing Force Awakens stuff. We get some really cool covers. We got Captain Phasma. We got uh, Kylo Ren. We got General Hux. We got all the main players from the good side and the bad side, everybody on these covers, and some uh, unique photos from what appears to be kind of like a forest planet with Kylo Ren on it, and some cool like stormtroopers walking with Kylo Ren, just all kinds of really nifty stuff. Owen, have you seen these photos? And if you have, what do you think about them? I wrote the bloody show. Of course I've seen those photos. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> reading your notes, man. <laughs> uh, no, Fuck it, I... we'll do it live! No. <laughs> No, I think uh, is a lot of the images that have come out for Star Wars, I think it's really cool. I really like the image of um, the last one you're talking about, of Ren, kind of mm -hmm. holding the crossblade. Every time I see it, it just looks cooler and cooler. And I like how the um, the other two covers, you know, the Sith one and the, the Jedi one, they're like polar opposites of each other. They're doing the exact same pose and the exact same kind of scene. So I think that's a nice little contrast. And right. it's three on three. They're introducing yeah. three new heroes and three new villains, so... It's a nice little balance. I, I think it's really cool. It makes me more excited for the film. I think yeah. it's good the fact that they don't have to rely on showing us loads and loads of trailers, like, yep. say, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think we, don't images, have, we don't have to get six trailers. Images are worth a thousand words. The trailer that mm -hmm. we got had literally maybe 12 words in it. Yeah. <laughs> we can count them because they're on screen right now. Uh, Eric, <laughs> just a, a quick sum up. What, what did you think about the, uh, these images so far that you've seen? Both really cool. Again, I, I, well, like Owen said, I like how they kind of contrast each other. Same positions, same. Uh, I, I'm so excited for this movie where, you know, anything's really cool. You know, there's really nothing else that can hype me up. Mm -hmm. So what about some what about some predictions and stuff? Because personally, I'm looking at Kylo Ren, that guy with the with the red cross lightsaber. For those of you who don't know the name by now, um, this guy, I'm looking at him and I'm seeing him on on Hoth. I've seen him on on Endor, possibly. What what are you seeing from these photos? What what do you think about the uh, the kind of veil that seems to be covering the Millennium Falcon in the in the bottom shot there? I mean, what what are your predictions thus far? Well, we obviously know that Kylo Ren is going on the Empire's biggest pub crawl. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I like this dude, Kylo Ren. Man, he likes his IPAs. Um, he likes a good dirty martini. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you think he drinks? By the way, we'll, we'll have to ask that at the end of the show. I'm going to ask the chat right now over there on YouTube and Twitch. What do you think Kylo Ren is drinking on these pub crawls on the Empire cra uh, pub crawl? Jedi blood. <laughs> yes. Who said that? What a good idea. 
I like that one. That's the best one yet. Uh, <laughs> so, gentlemen, predictions. What do you got? Uh, there'll, be, there'll be some Jedi stuff. The Money and Falcon will fly and shoot shit. Okay. Harrison Ford will be pissed off. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Someone will probably die. Someone will probably die. There's, there's a lot of a um, lot of people thinking that, that Harrison Ford isn't going to make it for the rest of the series. That's why he's kind of doing all of the press junkets now, because he's not going to be around for the next ones. Um, we obviously know that Harrison Ford can't do the next one because he'll be playing Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, man, these are really cool photos. You can check them out in the next issue of Empire. Um, yeah, man, they're, they're available on the internet, but definitely go pick it up uh, for October and read it because there's going to be all kinds of little tidbits and stuff in there, and we'll dissect it as time goes yeah. on. Second story of the day. Not only has X-Men Apocalypse wrapped, also Suicide Squad and Civil War are all wrapped. So now these films are in the can. Now they can do all the post-processing processing and stuff like that. Um, I, it's just kind of weird to live in an era where we have so many films not only like comic book films being filmed at once but being finished at the mm. same time and releasing around the same time um we recently found out that um uh no i guess not recently but uh we found out that batman versus superman was actually supposed to be released this month or you know not that long ago yeah. and we're still waiting seven months for it because they wanted to just wait for the right time uh, what is, what's your favorite or what's your most anticipated film out of these three that have just finished uh, by this weekend? Oh, and I'll start with you. Um, well, last week I was pretty vocal about Civil War, so mm -hmm. I don't think I'm allowed to say that. Um, nope. I've been pretty vocal about X-Men, so I'm not allowed to like that. Um, surprisingly, the only one that I haven't given any shit to is Suicide Squad, so by process of elimination, Suicide Squad. Yeah. But, you know, I think they're all going to be good movies. I think I've I've said my two cents regarding Civil War. It may not be the movie I want. It may not be as grand a movie as I would think it should be, but it'll be a really fun Marvel movie. I was um, actually talking to, uh, to my uncle movie. earlier, believe it or not. He's a, he's a huge comic book fan. He actually got me into comic books a long time ago. We were, we were talking mm -hmm. about some of this stuff. And man, like... Who gives a shit about Goliath? And who gives a shit about half the fucking characters no, in Civil no, War? It's not like, so much they're that. essential. They're no, important, the but like... Not. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Goliath is important. No, he's not. Kind of. He's the guy. When the only memorable thing he's the guy is... that dies. Exactly. He's not important. You know when, what I mean? When like, your he's only the memorable guy that dies. role is being killed by a robot of a much more popular character. <laughs> okay. Eric, what's your most anticipated out of the three? Uh, Civil War. No, mm -hmm. no doubt. Uh, I could care less about Apocalypse. Really? Going yeah. that far? Okay. I care less. Um, I. I Civil War, then Suicide Squad. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be Avengers two point five. So I'm pretty psyched for it. I love Ant Man. He's going to be in it. Falcon, Bucky Barnes is going to be in it. Yeah, and we're yeah. learning that you know Ant Man is quite formidable. He's he's a badass in his own right. You know what I mean? Like I I love that scene where he's. Uh, He's running from the bullets and stuff like that in the in the Ant Man thing, and he's like running through the miniature um, buildings and stuff like that. That was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, near the end, yeah, really rocking the shit, man. Like throwing trains and stuff. Like it was really cool. Uh, and I can't wait to see him fight more people like he did. And spoiler alert: the Falcon. Uh, he fights the Falcon. If you haven't seen Ant Man, go fucking see it already. Come on now. Um, but yeah, he he. Uh, I, I, what what fights would you like to see in uh, in Civil War, Eric? What are you well, looking forward to most? I want to see uh, Hawkeye and uh, Scarlet Witch, and uh, Hawkeye and uh, Black Widow. Apologies. Yep. Um, and I want to see Sp uh, Spider Man versus Ant Man. I would love to see that fight. That would be fucking cool, actually, because like his spider sense would tingle, but he'd be like, "What the? Where, where is the it? Fuck is it coming from? You know?" And just the quips back and forth between those two characters could be a really funny <laughs> moment. That's true, that's true. Owen, what are you most anticipating about Suicide Squad? Oh, I thought I was going to get to say my joke about Civil War. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say the most, to the most excited to film, most excited fight I could get in that film would be Josh Whedon and Kevin Feige. <laughs> One last time. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I, think, I think the reason I'm slightly more excited for Suicide Squad than Civil War is I think it's more the fact that Marvel's universe is established, the fact that 
although you know 90% of Marvel films are top draw, they're amazing films. You know what to expect from a Marvel film. You know what you're going to get when you're going in. DC, it's the kind of it's the hot topic. It's the new kid on the block, and you know, they obviously they have a lot of faith in Batman Superman. So obviously that at least they think it's a good movie. They also thought Green Lantern was a good movie, but they think it's a good movie. Yeah. So much so that the the kickstart in the cinematic universe, and I think Suicide Squad's it's unlike any other superhero film we've had. You know, it's now, I, not... I saw a headline recently um, relating to Suicide Squad. I, I, fortunately, I just glanced past the headline. I'm wondering if you guys had seen it and clicked on it or whatever. But no. uh, was it that uh, Superman is going to be in Suicide Squad no. without a suit? Or he's no, not in Suicide he's, Squad? Uh, he's not a... Henry Cavill's confirmed he's not in the film at all. Not in the film, yeah. Because it would fucking be over in three minutes. <laughs> Batman's, you know what I mean? there, like... Batman's there, but Superman's not. Right, right. I heard it's, I I it's going to be a prequel. Stone. Now, honestly, I, it's funny. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. There's rumors that it might be set before. Which makes Batman sense. Superman. It's uh, I don't, set before. I don't think it needs to be set before. I think you can have flashback scenes, but I think it wouldn't make sense. If you're building this universe, why set one of the films before? I think you want to keep moving forward. No, 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 you'd set the film before. I mean, honestly, you have to consider that this Batman, if it's indeed like the Dark Knight Returns Batman, like he's retired and shit. So, like, he's not going to be chasing the Joker. He's not going to be fighting crime in the sense that he would be in Suicide Squad. So I have to imagine that this is kind of, like, a precursor to that. And maybe this is a movie that's completely yeah, out of time. You know what I mean? Like, flaw. it's just sectional. It's flaw with that logic. That mm-hmm. They've said that Batman's been retired for about ten years. So what, is Suicide Squad set ten years before Batman Superman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. That's what I'm thinking. And that's just enough time. It's not? It, there's no chance that they're setting the film ten years before. Because the whole point not- is to try and... They're trying to build a connected universe as quickly as possible. Well, that's, so the, prequel, that's for the prequel to the universe. That's a good point. That's a good point, though. I, I, yeah. think, I think it'd be silly to make it a prequel set seriously before. I think, that, I think you need to move forward with the universe, not backwards. No, it's a great idea. So you establish characters, and then you can use them freely in the universe. But you can do that now with the film being set alongside. If, if you set it right after films. that... If you said it right after Batman Superman, why can't just Superman come and destroy everything? We'll say it during Batman Superman. Nah, Superman I... wouldn't get involved with these people, though. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got... like stopping missiles and shit. He doesn't yeah, give he's a got, fuck about he's these. He's got like... Metropolis buildings to fuck up again. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, build, the building those fuckers up one, one a minute. The, 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 what, then where's Wonder Woman? Why can't uh, she help him? She's too busy banging, banging Chris Pine. <laughs> Honestly, if you get stuck in a room with Chris Pine, you're not leaving. Um, <laughs> see, personally, it's it's interesting because you guys are most interested in in Suicide Squad and Civil War, but my most anticipated, believe it or not, is actually Apocalypse. Get the fuck um, out. I really, I, I saw some of the leaked trailer, and I really liked the dialogue that Apocalypse had, that monologue at the beginning of it, and I like how Brian Singer is going going to make this fully cyclical. You know what I mean, like. The the Magneto that we see in this film is going to evolve into the Magneto that we saw mm-hmm. in the original X Men, which is really cool. The one that's like you're all our children, and you're you know you're chosen by you know a higher yeah. being and stuff like that. Now we know all of that came from Apocalypse, which yeah. is fucking cool, man. And I personally, I just love the movies, the films of Brian Singer. I love what he's doing with like the mixture of practical and CG effects. I think it's going to be cool, and I think it's going to be like. A sleeper hit, man. It's going to come out and it's going to hit us just like Days of Future Past. Like a lot of people were like, yeah. meh, Days of Future Past is probably going to be shitty. And then most people started, I'm like, okay, not bad at all. Not bad I, at all. It's I got really room to grow, it. but yeah. If I, wanted solved... to see, if I wanted to see Grimace, I'd go to McDonald's. Oh, come on. He's Saul's fucking just, clearly um... blue. <laughs> Saul's just um, <clears throat> sent a brainwave from my head. Here's how you know Suicide Squad's not a prequel. First scene in the trailer, Amanda Waller's talking about Superman. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It could happen so he, after Man of Steel, before Batman and Superman. It's a prequel yeah, to Batman possibly. and Superman. Sandwich in between. Yeah. 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 What comes out first, Batman versus Superman or Suicide Squad? Batman, Batman versus Superman. BVS? Okay. Right on. Okay, so let's move into the next topic of the day. Um, this is a rather interesting one that none of us saw coming. Little Terminator Genesis in Big China. Dude. 
It did pretty fucking well, apparently. Despite it not being, uh, this is all written by Owen, mind you, so realize that Owen is a hell of a writer, and this is all his words, not mine. Uh, despite not being a critical success domestically, Aaron Taylor's Terminator Genesis has become a smash hit overseas in China. The film, which only made 89 million domestically, has now become China's fourth highest opening weekend of all time for a Hollywood film. With the film now making over 350 million worldwide, do you guys, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen in the chat, uh, do you believe that this will increase the chances of Paramount greenlighting a sequel? Owen, I'll start with you since this is your story. I couldn't have said it better myself. I, I, yeah. <laughs> you, took, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. Um, I, think they, right I, think, I think they were always planning on making a sequel, but I, I didn't. Paramount would have been worried seeing that um, before these Chinese box offices came in that they hadn't even broke even on the film. Now not only have they broken even, but they're on track record to, um, to make a bit of money from the film. Obviously not as much as you'd, they'd like, but they will profit from the film, so I think that's enough. And you have to remember they've only got a certain amount of time before the rights revert back to James Cameron and he sells them off again. So I think you want to be getting another film done and ready as soon as possible. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're assuming that this film was about 180 mil, right? It costs around yeah. that. Probably like 120 mil yeah. for the actual film itself. Then marketing, then, you know, distribution and shit like that. It probably if came they around pay, to if 800 million. So they 350 paid people mil. for that marketing. If they paid anyone for that marketing. <laughs> they did. That's, that's how you know. Yeah. That's why it got spoiled, because they fucking pay external companies to cut together these trailers. We discussed that on, on a previous Let's Chat. Yeah, it's, um, um, it had a budget of $155 million, and so far it's, it's just passed $350 million worldwide. Yeah, so, so that's it, good. I mean, so it's just about a, broken they, even at this told. moment in time. Yeah, how many weeks has it been out in China? Uh, this, I think this is an opening week. The fourth? Hold on. No, it's no, the fourth it, largest. It's the opening week. Damn, dude. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's his opening weekend. That's weekend. fucking wow. insane. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, like, culturally, like, you watch the films, and I guess the tone of Terminator Genesis is pretty cool, and, like, Arnold is still big out there, and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. I can understand that big time. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, <laughs> Eric, I really, like, how, you got the floor, man. What, what do you think about this? Are you ready for a Terminator Genesis sequel? Well, I, it, it's probably inevitable that they're making a sequel before the right, because they have, like Owen said, the rights revert back to James Cameron. They, they, I'm sure they wanted to make another film. They were trying to develop a trilogy in that time, but there's no way you could no. develop three films. So they can kick out another one quick, but a third yeah. one's out of the question. So at least a sequel they were planning on. So it was kind of, it's kind of inevitable. Uh, I'll probably go watch it and then walk out of it again. <laughs> Unless they manage to do it back to back, what they could do is shoot Terminator Genesis two and three back to back, to back. like uh, I, like I Back James to the Future Cameron would love that. Yeah, like Back Avatar. to the Future, like The Matrix. That's what they're doing with the Avatar sequel. So I bet James Cameron would love that. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Avatar. Who wants to see an you Avatar? Know, the thing movie? is, like, he's not he's not gonna go back to to Terminator. Like, I think that he'll get the rights Sorry. back, but he'll just and sell it off to somebody sell else off because. Sonic. He's doing fucking a three Avatar movies. You know how big those productions are? Like, that's you, his life now. You know when you're turning down Terminator to make Avatar? Well, I think that at this point, Avatar has more potential than Terminator. Terminator's I, done. Let it go. I disagree. Let I go. think if the... Made, I disagree also. Like, look at, look yeah. at Mad Max. Look what bringing back the original director did to that. That is true. I think, true. I think, I think a James Cameron Terminator film... Following off from the original trilogy would make a shit ton of money. Who wouldn't want to see that? That made more money yeah. than fucking Smurfs Three, Just Avatar. Up real in the quick. Fuck that shit. Yeah, no, he he doesn't give a shit. He's he's gone on record saying he doesn't yeah. care about Terminator anymore. Doesn't matter. Huh. I'll so be it. <laughs> we'll so yeah, we're probably looking at a Terminator Genesis sequel. Uh, you can avoid it sometime in the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, the next topic of the day. George Miller. Will he direct Man of Steel 2? This is off of our new rumor mill segment that we're uh, trying out. Uh, we have tried to avoid talking about rumors on the show. However, this is... Pro this might even come into fruition. So, like, we're going to talk about rumors. We're going to say a million times before we talk about it 
It is just a rumor. This is not the fact yet, and we're just going to speculate on things that we've heard and, and information that we've gathered. So in um, Owen's, uh, more of Owen's fantastic words, uh, in our final topic of the day, director of The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, and Collider host John Schnepp recently appeared on a DC-based episode of Popcorn Talk, where he stated the following. George Miller is doing Man of Steel 2. I don't feel weird about breaking it. Obviously, Zack Snyder is doing Justice League 1 and 2. James Wan is doing Aquaman. I think George Miller's a perfect choice for Man of Steel 2. He's going to bring so much to it. Uh, I don't really know where he's getting that from, but I will tell you that, you know, John Schnepp ain't going to talk out of his ass. He, yeah. he really mm -hmm. knows what he's doing. He's been in the industry for a long time. He's actually, like, one of my childhood heroes. He's produced Space Ghost Coast to Coast, and he's done a lot of stuff for Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Metalocalypse, and now, like, he's, he's getting into, like, some more serious films and documentaries and shit. So I trust this guy. Yeah. A lot of things that he has said on Collider Movie Talk have also come into fruition. He's just a, a, a very... Um, reputable source for this sort of thing i have recently seen uh mad max fury road by george miller and i'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of george miller i'm mm -hmm. a huge fan of the fallout games which have pretty much come out of george miller's films um i don't mm. necessarily see how george miller would fit into this superman universe um maybe you guys could explain it to me maybe you guys could convince me owen what do you think about it you have to remember at one point in time george miller was set to direct a justice league movie and I still didn't understand it. No, I, I love I, I love George Miller, but I don't. See George Miller where is he one of the there. most visually pleasing filmmakers in the business. Okay. Like if you, yeah. like there's yeah. a um, there's a guy who is currently trying to make a documentary on Justice League Mortal. Yeah, I've been keeping up with the developments on that. Some of the concept art for that is absolutely astounding. The Superman costume is the Kingdom Come costume. Well, you can you can dress a piece of shit up very nicely, but it's still a piece of shit. Yeah, but at least it'll look nice. So it's better than Fantastic Four. Yeah. yeah. You know, I yeah, I, I definitely dig what you're saying about uh, about George Miller's like designs and and the, what he does to worlds, his his worldscapes and stuff like that. His most modern work with uh, with Mad Max: Fury Road, I can kind of see like if he were to do a Justice League, like what the Green Lantern Corps, like where they hang out and where they meet, would yeah. would look like, you know? Yeah. And what um. Perhaps a new, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm sorry, Fortress of Solitude. I just blanked mm -hmm. out for a minute. But uh, like, what that type of stuff would look like? Yeah. Elaborate a little bit more. Like, what would you like to see George Miller build? I I think George Miller would be a great fit for the um, for the Man of Steel films. I, I, I don't see how you wouldn't think that's a good fit. You know, he's he's probably one of the best filmmakers working working today. I mean, he made Happy Feet too. Come on. <laughs> And Babe, Pig in the City. That was a good movie. And Beyond Thunderdome. I forget, I forget that he is incredibly versatile as yeah, a director, exactly. as a filmmaker. Yeah, exactly. And that's, the... that's something to be... <laughs> Tom Hardyak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love put... it. <laughs> you know, oh, my God. Thank you, chat. Thank you, Jake, in the chat you know, over there. <laughs> you know, he's proved that he's a very versatile director. You know, This guy can go from making Mad Max Fury Road to Happy Feet. Yeah. And you know, you know, he's making the next Mad Max film, um, The Wastelands. That'd be interesting to see. But you know, not only is he an amazing filmmaker, but he's he seems to really been a, a renaissance peak of his career at the moment. You know, say what you want about Fury Road, but it, it felt like it was a young man's film. It really did. It yeah. really you know, did. But it you had, don't believe it. Had it a, it's a seventy-year-old man. It was like a young guy making it. an homage to an old guy's film, is what it yeah. felt like. But it was fucking perfect. You, you wouldn't know. believe that a 70-year-old man directed that film. Yeah. And the picture and, up on screen right now, he's wearing this badass leather jacket and shit, and he's just like, yeah, yeah man, I'm the fucking director. <laughs> he is Mad Max. <laughs> he is Mad Max. <laughs> uh, Eric, what do you think about George Miller? Uh, possibly, possibly, remember, there's a question mark there, uh, directing Man of Steel 2. Uh, you know what? He makes very good, visually pleasing films. I would love to see uh, maybe a... Uh, you know, a uh, fortress of solitude built by him. That'd be great. Uh, maybe go back to Crypt Krypton and see that. Oh, that would, that would be fucking sick, yeah. But it blew uh, up. It's not J.J. Abrams' Superman. I'm just saying, maybe if they want to bring in Brainiac, you can go back to Krypton and yeah. kind of see what it, how it used to be. Uh, There's no reason why Krypton's story... I mean, Krypton is 
been around for millions of fucking years. You know what I mean? Like we can visit it. We can go back to it. There's yeah. definitely going to be stuff on uh, in the Fortress of Solitude referring to things that happened mm -hmm. on Krypton. So we have yeah. to see it somehow. And an epic battle scene at the end. He's great at all that stuff. I oh, do yeah. not do not oppose to this at yeah. all. Now we've just got to speculate. What giant monster creature will Superman fight in this movie? The Targaryen Snare Beast. We need the Targaryen Snare Beast. Damn it. <laughs> hmm. Giant spiders. That's it. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I don't know. I would definitely pay to see Superman fight like a bunch of those like fucking crazy, uh, what, what is it, not the murder boys. Um, what, what are the guys called in, in, uh, oh. in Mad Max? The fucking white painted guys. Oh the, man, the, the Chad, help huffers? us out. The paint huffers, the fucking silver paint huffers, the guys. I would pay Wait, so much money to see just a bunch of crazy guys jumping at fucking Superman. He's like, shit, I, I gotta punch him, but I can't kill him. Fuck, what do I do? <laughs> you know, like, I think that, that would be an interesting dynamic that George Miller might bring into it as well. That this morality thing that, like, I have all these powers, but I really have to be careful how I use them because I could potentially kill all these people. So, you know. I like what he did with uh, Fury Road. I like what he did with all the other previous Mad Max films with having this mm -hmm. tragic hero that doesn't want to be a hero, but he's kind of forced into this role. So maybe him taking on Superman would really be a cool thing, you know, um, even from a visual standpoint, like a, a writing, a character, a, a directing Henry Cavill standpoint, you know? Um, imagine a chase scene between Superman and someone else, but directed by George Miller. Yeah. Yeah, like fucking Flash, throw a Flash in there, you know? Because that's something else we have to understand is that, like, by the time Man of well, Steel imagine, comes out, we will have been introduced to a lot of these characters on screen. Yep. Imagine if they saved Doomsday from Man of Steel sequel. Imagine, imagine George Miller directing a Superman Doomsday fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just fucking brutal and bloody and just bam, bam. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd pay for that. I'd love to. I think I would absolutely love to see Miller I'm, take on Superman. Imagine, like, the death of Superman f scene. Built by yeah. George yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next topic of the day. I don't know. Was that the final topic, or do we have another one? You, yeah, you we are, got another topic. You are jumping around with these topics. All right. Uh, Very loosey-goosey. This is a little, little spur-of-the-moment show. Anyway, final topic of the day, Vin Diesel coming back to the Triple X franchise. He's talking about Triple X 3. He wants to do it. Um, what's the guy's name? You wrote me a script, and I, didn't, I don't even have it pulled up. I don't know where it is anymore. There it is. <laughs> Come on, man. Dominic. I told you. Hey, we, we, we're, we're going to get to to that in a minute. But, yeah, you, you, you know, you got it. Anyway, uh, Xander Cage, is he set to come back to the big screen? Well, according to actor Vin Diesel, it seems so. The actor, famous for his role in the original Triple uh, X, the XXX films, uh, along with the Fast and Furious franchise, uh, took to Instagram announcing the following. While I was filming Triple X, guys on set called me Air Diesel. Time to re uh, the time to return has come. Filming starts in December in the Philippines. Eric, are you excited for Vin Diesel returning to Triple X Three? I am holding my breath for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh I have God. never seen it. I will never see it. I'm not gonna. No, I'm. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm uh, sorry, Vin Diesel. Just fucking Groot it up. I'm. I don't know. Be black Groot. Bolt. Be Groot and Black Bolt. That's all you need to focus on, Vin Diesel. Uh, I think Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Ice Cube killed this franchise. Oh my God. State of the Union. State of the Union. <laughs> State of the Union. But I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Actually, what that, that would be cool if Triple X has Ice Cube in it as well. Like Triple X Three. It, it's uh. It's it's Vin Diesel and Ice Cube. I would fucking see that. I really would. So, is it is it going to be X Nine? <laughs> triple yeah, it's, it's triple X cubed. Or, 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 um... Notice these films come out in bunches, like this and the Point Break remake are coming out near each other. Uh, hey. It's not a remake though. It's a it's a full fledged sequel. Full fledged whatever. It's shit. Even That's more, what it is. yeah. Six X is too many. <laughs> yeah. Is there, there's only one film I'm going to be watching this tonight that has three X's in it, and it doesn't have Vin Diesel in it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's She-Hulk starring China. No, it's the Hulk Hogan yeah. porn tape. That's that's what you watch. Damn right? it, guys! Let me close Team Viewer. <laughs> 
Uh, do we have anything else to talk about this shitstorm of a movie? Um, I'm sorry, Vin. Vin, if you're watching, we re like I love you as an actor. I think you yeah. did great in Boiler Room. I think you did a great job in Iron Giant and as Groot and like. Vin, I would love to see you as as Black Bolt, but come on, Triple X, who gives a shit? Vin, I absolutely love you in the Pacifier. Guarantee the on, don't be a dick. The, the Rock, the Rock is, <laughs> is going to be in this film. Guarantee the Rock's going to be in this film. Okay, Please, no, I, I, I buy that too. If the Rock is in it with Vin Diesel with fucking Ice Cube, I will go and see it, and yeah. I will eat my words. I, th I think the Rock knows a bit better than to be in the shitstorm of a movie. He's the highest growing action, highest grossing action star. So why is he going to be the in? The, why is he going to be busy. in a third installment of a franchise that is bombed? Because he's the fucking Rock, and he can. I don't know about that. I don't think Triple X bombs, dude. I, Second I, third. Yeah, but this that's not with Vin Diesel. You know what I mean? You get the the you know the star of the franchise to come back. It's gonna it'll do better. Yeah. Do you know much? That's kind of what they're banking on. Do you know how much money those Fast and Furious films make? They make boatloads of money. Yeah, but yeah. they didn't start making that boatload until The Rock joined the franchise. Still, that's not true at all, man. Not true at all. <laughs> first off, but maybe maybe in the UK, but now over here that shit was huge from from day one. Paul Walker, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel makes money. It's 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 a fact. Vin Diesel makes money. People love Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, and this movie will make money and be successful and probably spawn a fourth uh, installment. Yeah, I mean, look at the Expendables. They don't stop making those fucking movies, you know. And in an era where Expendables keeps coming out, you can guarantee that Triple X will make a return as well. Mm. <laughs> so that'll do it for the show, guys. Um, there was another topic that you wanted to talk about, Owen, but didn't actually make it to the um, to the setup and stuff like that. Uh, something about Rogue One. I don't care. <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin. Grand Moff is Tarkin's rumored. gonna be he's gonna be made out of plastic for the film. He's gonna be a Madame Tussauds wax figure and they're gonna move him around with his slippers on. Yeah. That's all that needs to be said about <laughs> the matter. I thought it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be like a weekend in Bernie's thing where they're just gonna play music and uh voodoo <laughs> I'd oh, watch man. that. We were we were talking. Uh, never mind. I can't say this on air. Never <laughs> no, no, you can It was about the Rodney Roddy Piper thing that we were talking about the other night. Oh, no. no. Yeah, I <laughs> can't do that. Um, but yeah, I guess that'll do it for this episode of Let's Chat Movies. Um, this brings us to a little bit more of a somber note. Um, so, as we had said, there's a little bit of a special announcement that we have to make. Um, I will be stepping down temporarily as host and senior producer of Let's Chat Movies. Don't worry, I'll come back. I'm coming back real soon. But I got some things kind of going on in my life right now that I got to take care of. And it would be very irresponsible of me to try to handle all of that stuff and be a good host. So I'm going to give the job over to Owen and Eric and Jake. They're going to do a phenomenal job. Uh, you can actually check out a show that they did um, this weekend regarding SummerSlam, it was like a Let's Chat Wrestling, the first iteration of that. Oh, and you fucking killed it, man. You did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have no doubts in my mind that it'll be like really awesome that um, in like two weeks time. I mean, that's only that's only like, you know, two weeks of shows. That's four episodes that I won't be around for. So just keep tuning in. I guarantee you the show is going to keep getting better and better. Even if I'm not around for a little bit, I will be working behind the scenes as more of like a man behind the curtain sort of thing. But I am. I got to do this. It's important. Yeah. <laughs> I um. I wrote a few words for for Nick's funeral. You better not make me cry, you son of a bitch. Nick's funeral? What? <laughs> this, this is Nick's eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna you Googleize me? Let me let me go put my black tie on. I'm gonna get oh, Googleized right now. Hold on, hold on. Let me get off screen. <laughs> <laughs> When Nick told us that he was taking some time away from the show, we were all devastated. Not only is this man a tech genius and a fantastic host, but he's also a really good friend. And I credit all of our success, both as part of Let's Chat and for our individual channels, greatly down to Nick's mentorship and involvement with all of us. It truly has been a pleasure to work alongside you and to help grow the show into something really special. As for the future of Let's Chat, myself, alongside Eric, Jake and Saul, will continue to run the show as usual. But we'll be running Mondays for movies and comics on Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern time, same bat time, same bat channel. So with all that said, guys, where can people find you? 
Uh, you can find me over at youtube.com slash golden vision. You're probably watching that here. Um, you're also probably watching this right now on twitch.tv slash golden vision. And uh, even though I'm not going to be around, the show will still be broadcast on both youtube.com slash golden vision and twitch.tv slash golden vision. So make sure you keep checking it out there. Eric, what about you? Uh, Baron Von Comics on YouTube, Twitter, and uh, PSN. I'm trying to get my uh, Let's Play getting uh, going, so. Come join me. And as always, you can find me on Twitter and YouTube, just at Aaron Likes Comics. Make sure to tune into Let's Chat Comics on Thursdays. Look out for a brand new po a brand new podcast hosted by myself. Maybe a special guest or two. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care and keep reading. Excelsior!